you, buddy. Good it, to see you. It feels like, Amy, this has been my experience with Morgan over the last six months. Hey, you in town? No, I'm not in town. Okay. Is that how you read his texts? Yeah. Okay. And then he's, the I'm here. For, I'm not here. And then we do this, and this is literally the first time we've seen each other. Yeah. But we've tried. We've been trying to get a game of pickleball going. We've been, tr we've been trying. Yeah. That's why I don't know that I've ever walked in and just hugged anybody before. If I saw Morgan, I didn't give him a big hug up there. Just because, yeah. like, my friend, I haven't seen you forever, man. It's been a long time. Golly, your hair's all long. Good to see all you guys. Yeah, and that's not that good to see them. It's really good to see me, though, <laughs> really to be honest. You yeah. Yes. Your hair's growing. You growing, growing boy? Yeah. <laughs> you. I'm a growing boy, yeah. Yeah. What's, uh, what's been happening? Man, I just got back from Australia. I spent Christmas down there almost a month. And I heard. It was awesome. Christmas in Australia is cool because it's warm. Yeah, it was like a little snapshot mm. of summer and uh, spent so much time with my family and old mates. And I've got all these little nieces and nephews now, and they all know who I am now, which is. Oh, great. because you actually are around. Yeah, they're available. all three, like three, four, one, two. So mm. the, like, I know them from FaceTime. And so now it's really nice to have a real connection. You are um, without shoes in a lot of your pictures, especially when you're being active. And so, but there's a guy who keeps offering Amy money for, for feet pictures. And Is so, right? would you, if somebody messaged you and said, hey, I'll give you 200 bucks for close ups of your feet and only your feet, would you do that? Nah. You would, even though your feet are already for free on, on your Instagram? Well, well, yeah, to be clear, I'm being offered $250. Oh, my bad. So I didn't mean to under, undervalue you. <laughs> Would you what? do feet pictures? Where is that on the hierarchy of feet value? No idea. Like, we, have, we haven't seen a what's chart. What's the most valuable feet picture? We only know her value. Okay. I tried to sell him some of mine, and, and it was no. far lower. Yeah. But now he wants giant pictures of her with her feet right near the camera, and she's standing her head small, and he's offered even more. That's pretty specific. <laughs> That's I know. what I'm saying. It's like giant nests or something, and so you, all weird. you have to do is just make your foot or hand look big. That's all I would have to do, and he said he'd pay me. I mean, I'm not going to do it. Wait, but. do you reply to this person? No. We well, talk about him on the show all the time. Yeah. Yeah, right. But you're someone who is at the beach a lot, and I wonder, yeah. since it's already readily available, would you also take money? Well, I, maybe because it's so available, I've never been offered money for it. I do get asked this question a little bit, which I think is equally as interesting, which is, are your feet ticklish? Do you get ticklish? Hmm. Wait. It seems like a common, oh. like, multiple people... Question. Never right. thought about that. Yeah. And if I, uh, I don't even know what it means. I search the computer history of whoever asked that question. <laughs> Wait, you don't know what that means? Oh, I don't. I don't do any more than read it and then move on from it. So I haven't like looked into where it comes from. But are they? Yeah. Are what they, are they ticklish? Uh, I I don't know. Maybe sometimes. Take take them off. We do it right now. <laughs> Let's try. We it. do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Look. Let's just let's get to the nitty gritty. You you played this song that you're about to play. You played it at a live show. We saw it on TikTok. I ripped the audio off TikTok and just played it on the air. The whole thing. It's a phone version. It sound your your performance was great, but the audio quality was pretty terrible because it was just somebody recording it. Right. Uh, then I know some people that know some people, and I got a bored version of you play, of that. And, you know, I didn't know if you are going to get upset at me for, ha for having it and playing it. I didn't ask permission because I didn't want you to say no. And I felt mm. like the song was really good and you would be grateful later, hopefully, if that ended up being a single. And right. so we had that and I was playing it. And then it became your single now. And so I want to go back to that night because whenever you walked out, it sounded like you didn't say anything to the crowd. It sounded like you were a bit emotional before you played it. Is that true or were we putting too much into that? Um, I mean, it's. Very true that it was an emotional time. Man. The first I mean, time you played, were you like, yeah. were you, I guess my question is, were you thinking about, okay, should I play this tonight? And did you make the decision right then and there? Or were you like, I'm going to play this new song I just wrote? No, no, it was a then and there thing. It was a moment in the show that was always going to be the, okay, the band leaves the stage and then it's a piano moment. But uh, there was a couple of options that I had to do that night of different piano versions of different songs. And um, I'd just written this song um, over for you the week before. And I hadn't even shown anyone. Like I hadn't even sent it to my management or anything. But um, did you write it by yourself? I'd been playing it a lot. Did no, I, I wrote it with a couple other people here in town. So how vulnerable is that? That you go. Yeah. I mean, it's songwriting is very vulnerable when it's very personal. Yeah. And you go and you go and write this <laughs> yeah. song. This has been happening. You yeah. got to. You have to trust those two. And I'm assuming they're people you've written with before. Yeah, one of them was. Two of them I met that day. Oh boy, hello, I'm it Morgan. Was, um, here. <laughs> It was, I don't know. I don't know how or why it happened. I guess some things just happened for a reason. I, it was the only song I wrote in a four-month period, and I went into that session because um, I particularly I was a big fan of um, a couple of people in the room, 
and then one of my really good mates was in there um, and I thought I need to do something creative because I you know this is what I do it's like a, an outlet and I sat in the corner of the room and I just looked at everyone I was like guys I'm gonna be completely useless in this session unless I just tell you what's going on you know were they like elephant in the room they knew you were how, it was a difficult season and they were like does he want to do we do we even write a song because there's just so much right. there if it's how was that uh, I don't know if that that part of it ever had a chance to happen because I just said I just said look yeah I'm just gonna let's just do this well the know? song is so good I mean if you write it or you wrote it for somebody else song's good by itself regardless of whatever story it is but the personal story makes it it doesn't matter whose story but a personal story adds value to anything creative because we feel as the person who's listening consuming we feel like it is it's like authentic and legitimate right and that's the goal it is and as a a songwriter i feel like that aspect of it i'm really proud of and and the i think the pride of it comes from after sharing it seeing how that level of vulnerability and personal writing is actually the thing that most widely relates to people yeah and the amount of messages and comments i get on social media now i just it's so they're so great and they're like it's so much more than hey i love that song or that show was so fun it's like thank you for writing that song thank you for putting into words how i felt or how i feel thank you for letting me know i'm not alone and those kind of things mean so so much um having gone through a situation like that seeing that it helps other people going through situations like that um yeah it's really a big deal the only thing that i can relate just a bit of my story to this here is, and it's not the only thing, but when I would write like my first book, I had to, I didn't have to, but I revealed some very personal things that I'd never revealed before. And it felt a little, uh, embarrassing is not the word, but I would like talk about some really uh, personal things about my mom and um, addiction and struggles and things that I felt people were going to feel sorry for me for. And so I was like, I don't want people to feel sorry for me. And I was embarrassed that they might but then when people started to come up to me at like shows when i would I'd go and do they would go hey that part and it'd be that specifically they would go that's the part they go i related so much to that the one that the thing that i was so worried about the thing that i was like man when people hear this they're gonna think less of me or they're gonna think they're gonna feel sorry for me and i didn't want them to feel sorry for me i was using that as an outlet to share but it was that that people related to the most mm. and i wonder if that was similar with you where you're going, I'm going to do this song, it's so personal. And like you said, you didn't expect people to just be like, I needed that song for me, not for, mm. not just listening to your story. Like they needed it for them. Yeah. And all these people hearing that, your very personal story, but then also finding their own story inside of it. There's got to be some something in that that makes you feel great that you didn't expect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had no expectations for it. I'm not sure if you had expectations for those moments in that book. I've, I've read the book, by the way. It's great. Thank you. Um, but, I've heard that song. It's really yeah. good, too. Um, <laughs> it's great for that reason, though. And I think the same reason that I feel like people kind of um, have been reacting to this song. I, I literally played it that night on the festival because I felt like it was something that I needed to say, something that I needed to do. And it wasn't until after the show that I realized, like, oh, like, felt good to do that and just be honest and not try to cover things up mm -hmm. or like you know puff your chest out or whatever the thing is that dudes do to, to get through moments like that sometimes and um i didn't really get a choice in any of the rest of it because by the time i woke up the time difference and stuff someone like you've played the song on the radio tiktok's had this video shared however many times and after that it kind of just took on a life of its own in other people's lives and so after that i felt like it's obviously always going to be my story, my song, but I feel like now that it's out there in the world, it's it's everybody's who needs it to be. Was there ever a time where you thought, I may never put this song out. I may never play this song. We wrote it. Maybe it was just that cathartic experience of songwriting. Did you ever think, you know what, but I just might not ever play it? Yeah, 100%. Really? 100%, yeah. I mean, uh, there's so many, especially when you first get to town and you're still you're kind of meeting different writing groups there's so many rooms that you're in 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 nashville where they're like hey we need to write a hit song today you know like that's the goal the goal of this day was just dude sitting in the corner of a room just trying, yeah just trying to make sense of a situation and um uh that part of it creatively is really rewarding too it's just like hey sit down say what you got to say weird to 
have people in your business? Yeah, but they were in it anyway. I don't really get a choice mm -hmm. of that. That wasn't a, that, that that was not an added part of this moment. No, rewind. Weird to have people in your business. Period. Even before the song came out, in a way that that hadn't happened before. Right. I yeah, mean, totally. I mean, it was a high profile marriage. Yeah. And with that, you the spoils of it was great. Yep. And then also, I gotta imagine though, I just was so mad at people about. I was just like, I was. I, you didn't even need to defend it, and you you've handled this like so freaking mature. And I just wouldn't have. I I just wouldn't. I'd be. I'd lit things on fire. Just for the sake of it, and I was like, <laughs> people on the internet. Now, right. I, I hear I. This is a very pro Morgan Evans show, and I was getting mad for you, and I kept going. Morgan's just acting like a mature adult. Maybe I should do that, you know. And I that had to be tough to just have all these emotions and go. I got to worry about me and only me. Yeah. Because that's a beast when people just are wrong. Yeah. Right. They're just, it's it's so I commend you for that because I I'd have been I'd been canceled by now. Thanks, man. Yeah, it was really tough in that way. And I am, I mean, the only thing you control is you and how you feel and what you're doing. So I just, uh, thankfully, I have good people around me that would keep reminding me of that and keep me grounded in that way. And um, I'm, I'll am i always be grateful for that. I yeah. found, found some really, like, true friends in life and in business. And, um, yeah, I credit them with any of the... <laughs> Any of the smart well, decisions I made. Like you really learn who, like who your folks are when yeah. when when times aren't the best. When there's really no huge benefit for them to be your folks. Yeah. Other than friendship and love. Yep. That's when you really learn who your who your people are. Absolutely. And that's the real benefit of a time that really isn't that beneficial. You know. And I think we've all been through them. Uh, the song's great. You're great. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm in love with you. <laughs> Thanks, man. I am. It's mutual. I hope that makes you happy. I'm in love with you. you. I'm in love with Morgan Evans. I said it. Wow. I said it. It's out there. I said I, it. <laughs> I think one of the most beautiful lines, which may even speak to the maturity Bobby's talking about, is I would have let go if you wanted me to. Right. That's a certain level of where someone is to recognize if you need, even though it's so painful, if you need me to let go, I would have done it. Right. What's what's the deal to because you, you you're gonna go and you're gonna promote the song obviously, but it's not like you want to go to every interview talking about your divorce honestly. How are you gonna handle no, that? No, I really don't. I know, do that. but but you wrote a song. I mean, but I just wonder how you're gonna handle that because you're going. I wrote this song. It's the yeah. single. I'm here to talk about the single. But it's just a, how how are you gonna handle that? Uh, I don't really know. Yeah. I haven't done it really yet. I mean, I feel comfortable with you guys, so sure. it's like if I'm going to do it anywhere, I'll do it here. But um, I, I don't know. Ask me in a few months, I guess. Mm. Yeah. We'll specifically ask him that. We'll only bring him in yeah. to do that one question. <laughs> yeah, bring me back for so one how? question in three months. Oh, uh, you you still you working out? Yeah. Like you good physically? You hit, you hitting hard? Yeah. I'm not doing the dry January thing right now. Ray did that. Feel pretty good about it. Ray did it for six days, and then he came on the show and said, "I quit." <laughs> so it was a real. He's like, I'm doing dry January. Yeah. And then he's like, I quit. We're like, why? He goes, I don't know. It's Saturday. And so I hope you have, yeah, you're, you're done. Yeah. You're good now. Yeah. Well, look, I, you know, I drank enough beers in Australia over Christmas to like last me through January, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, in Australia, the beer culture there, is there, is it 21, first of all, to drink beer? No, it's 18. Okay. Is yeah. it a loose 18? Meaning if you're 16, is it you know, like. Oh, no, they're pretty strict about the, they are? the 18, yeah. Mm. Yeah, pretty strict about most things in Australia, actually. Is there an Australian beer that you really like that when you come to the States, you're like, dang, I wish they had uh, um, Koala Light. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, Koala Light would be you awesome. You could probably make that. It'd probably yeah. work in America. <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, there's so many beers back home now. It's like um, all the little microbreweries when I used to live there and now like some of those are big beers. I, I quite enjoy just going along and trying every tap along there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, guys? This is it. This is our time. I want, I, we don't, I, I, listen, I try to get him. I try to hang out with him all the time. He's never around. I th what I think is he sits at home and goes, I'm in Australia. Then he's got to post pictures in Australia on his Instagram so as to not blow his cover because <laughs> he doesn't want to hang out. Yeah. He's like, well, I told him I'm in Australia. So 
Uh, go ahead, Eddie. No, along with the beer conversation, like a lot of people yeah. talk about Fosters, you know, like yeah. Fosters for beer. Like, oh, is, yeah. Is that big in Australia or is that just big here? I think at one point it was big in Australia, like maybe in the 70s or something like that. But I think most of it's okay. made here now. Let's do it, Eddie. Yeah. Right. Fosters. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I do keep, I do keep Fosters back. on the bus. They have I keep Fosters on the bus in oh. case someone asks that question <laughs> and then they have to drink it. So if, if you come on the bus, remember that. Boomerangs, Bones. Outback yeah. Steakhouse. Yeah. We're going to do all the generic, stupid things that everybody. Eddie's opened it up. Outback Steakhouse. Do they have them there? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I've never been to an Outback Steakhouse. We oh, should go to one we of should those go, together. Yeah, oh we gosh. should go. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. I'm going to take you, and we're going to document <laughs> your yeah. first ever. That's hilarious. Well, that is. Okay, but I'll probably be like, hey, where are you? I'm in Australia. Bro, I just saw you at the show three hours ago. There's no way you can be in Australia in three hours. I'll post a qualifying picture straight off. Yes. Though. Meat pies. Yeah. You just said, yeah. I don't know what that means. Well, do you what? have them? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. that's still a thing? Oh, yeah. Ask him about the kangaroo. Well, oh, yes. Ask him about the kangaroo. This final question. It's not about you. I'm the, it, I think if you just said, yeah. we're generically going to find a kangaroo in Australia. It yeah. doesn't matter. It's just the law of averages. And you put it in front of me. I think I can whoop its butt. Fighting a kangaroo? Yeah. I would bet money on me. We're not finding one of those muscle ones that they put on the internet. And we're also not going to get a baby. It's just a ran random kangaroo. You put it in front of me. I think I can whoop a kangaroo's butt. Okay. Go. Do I think, would I back you over the kangaroo? You, yeah, they say, here's $10,000. Who are you betting on? To the death. To the death? Yeah, I mean, look, there's different kinds of kangaroos, right? you got the gray kind, which are around the coastal areas where mm -hmm. most people live. And yeah, I definitely whooped them. They're you old. got those big, red, <laughs> muscly ones yeah, in the land. Yeah. yeah, but they don't, they don't have the agility I have. They're too many muscles. Are you taking on one of the big ones? I'm taking on a random kangaroo. It doesn't matter. They just grab one. They just draw the lottery. This kangaroo, whoop, average kangaroo. Averages, you'll beat an average kangaroo. What's up? Really? What? Yeah. What's up? An expert. Wow. You know what his, Australia. Do you know what his middle name is? Morgan Rue Evans. So don't tell me <laughs> that the guy doesn't know about kang kangaroos. All right. Okay. All right, yeah. so you're going to Europe, and you're playing these shows with Mitchell Tenpenny? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And you're doing those. I'm trying to see, and then you're doing the shows with Brett Young all, like, March through January, February, March, April, May. Yeah. I can do it with my fingers. I can do it in May. And then you're you're all I mean you got a bunch of shows huh? And then we're about to announce some dates for uh, the middle of the summer too. Okay, here though. Yeah, it's gonna be busy. Gonna be busy year. Some here, here though. Some here. Some. Uh, okay, stop with leaving. Yeah. God dang man, <laughs> he's gone yeah. all the time. Like he's trying to create a good career for him all over the globe. Yeah. Country music is so fun to play all over the world right now. Are you a it's pop so star exciting. in Australia? Am I a pop star? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. It doesn't mean you have to do pop music, but okay, are you? pop star popular in that people know you that just don't know country music back home? Like, do your songs get played on Top 40 radio? Yeah. Yeah, they get played on Top 40 radio, yeah. Um, That's cool. That's cool, huh? We just got to do the New Year's Eve thing in Australia, which was one of the coolest the what? gigs. The New Year's Eve in Australia. Yeah. Like, they set up a stage at the Opera House in front of the bridge before they do the fireworks and stuff like that, which felt like a good... It was a very old genre show, so I felt... Um, good to be involved in that. That's as a, in as Sydney, the, the guy. Yeah, the Opera House. Yeah, wow, that's cool. I've been wow. there. I climbed up on that bridge. Did ya? Yeah, that's they cool, eh? they strap you in, and then they you walk up all the stairs, and the wind's blowing you like crazy. And I was just like, I'm just looking for Morgan, and they're like, <laughs> walk to the top. It was, it was, or a it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys at Morgan Evans Music. The song's over for you. Stream it so many times that you need to go to your doctor because you yeah. need some medicine to get you happy again. Love That's it. how much I think people should stream it. <laughs> uh, check it out and then see Morgan all over the world, basically. Uh, yeah. Morgan Evans. Morgan, good to see you, buddy. Thank you for performing that. You're amazing. And that is all. Back in a minute. This is about the show.